Maptitude mapping software is designed to complement all of the work that you do in Microsoft Excel. Maptitude can read and write Excel files so that you can easily perform geographic analysis on your spreadsheet data and use your results in either platform. This tutorial will show you a number of ways that you can use Maptitude with Excel and unleash new analysis possibilities impossible with a spreadsheet alone. For example, here I have an Excel workbook that contains a worksheet with customer data that includes addresses and sales volume, and a second worksheet with the addresses of my stores. Maptitude makes it easy to map my data in several ways. The first thing I will do is click the New Workspace button to open the Maptitude Home window. Here's where you prepare your Maptitude workspace by telling Maptitude what type of mapping you want to do. Choose the New Map of My Data Table Spreadsheet option to prepare maps that use data from an Excel file. When I click OK, Maptitude asks for the location of the Excel file and which sheet to use. I'm going to work with the customer worksheet first, so I'll go ahead and click OK to start the Maptitude Create a Map Wizard. Maptitude shows you the fields in your data that it found for mapping. You can verify and change the fields if necessary, but in this case they are correct, so I can go ahead and click Next. And now choose how to use your data in the map. First, let's locate the individual customers as points on a map. So I'll choose this first option to locate the records in the Excel file by address, zip code, or city, and click Next. Provided that your records have unique numeric IDs, you can choose whether to import the data or to keep a link to the original data source when mapping it. Because I update my customer Excel file frequently to refresh sales figures and add new customers, I'm going to choose the Link Data to Map It option, and choose the field that contains the IDs. This will allow me to quickly update my map in the future rather than having to create a new map from scratch every time that I update my Excel file. When I click Next, Maptitude gives me the option to display the data with a theme. I'm going to choose the Size Theme option, and choose the Sales field so that customers with higher sales will be shown with larger symbols. Next, I can choose some analysis options. For now, I just want to see the customers on the map, so I'll leave the None option chosen and click Finish. Maptitude uses the address information in the Excel spreadsheet to place a point for every record. In this case, of the 1,341 customer records in the spreadsheet, Maptitude was able to locate 1,325 using the address and zip code. One record was located using the address and nearby zip code, because perhaps it had no zip code or an incorrect one and 15 records could only be located at approximate locations within the appropriate zip code, perhaps because these addresses were post office boxes or were missing street address information. When I click OK, Maptitude draws the map with the geocoded customers scaled to show their volume of sales. Another way I can show my customer data on the map is to attach it to an area layer such as zip codes so that I can see the number of customers, the total sales, or the average sales for each zip code. This time I want to use Create a Map Wizard to add the data to this open map, so I'll choose Map, Add Table Spreadsheet to a map. Again, I will use the same Excel file and the same customer sheet. I'll choose the Show Zip Code Boundaries with Your Data Attached option and click Next. Again, I will link the data to the map, and this time I'll choose to create a color theme of the sales data. Maptitude adds a color theme to the map showing the total sales in each zip code. Zip codes shown in lighter colors have lower sales, and zip codes shown in darker colors have higher sales. The last thing I want to do is add the store locations to the map. Again, I'll choose Map, Add Table Spreadsheet to a Map, choose the Excel file, and the sheet with the store data, and again locate the records using their address. Because my store locations do not require any regular updates, I'll go ahead and just import them into the map without linking them to the Excel file. I'll choose None for the Theme option, but I will check this box to label the stores, and click Finish. When I click OK, Maptitude adds the two store locations to a new layer in the map and zooms to show the locations. I will click the Store symbol here in the Display Manager so that I can change the style from the default and differentiate the stores from the customers. I'll change the symbol, the size, and the color. I will also click here to change the label. I'll make it larger, and change the color. Finally, I'll click the Previous Scale button to see all of the customers again. I've now used the data in the Excel file to show which zip codes have the highest sales, where all the customers are and what their sales are, and where the stores are located. 
Now I can use Maptitude to perform some geographic analysis of my customers and get the results back into Excel. First, I want to find exactly which of my customers are within 5 miles of one of the stores and create a new Excel spreadsheet of just those customers. I'm going to use the Radius tool on the drawing toolbar and click on the map at one of the store locations. Enter 5 in the Radius box and click OK. Maptitude draws a circle with a 5 mile radius on the map. Now, if I right click on it and choose Export to Excel, I can create a new Excel file of just the customers within that 5 mile circle. I'm going to click on the second tab here to see all the customers within 5 miles of where I clicked. And if I scroll to the right here, you can also see the straight line distance and travel time for each of the customers to the store where I clicked. This next worksheet shows the stores within that circle, in this case just my store number 1 is in it. The next worksheet is data from the color theme of sales on the zip codes. Any zip code that is at least partially within the circle is listed in the first column, and the sales for those zip codes is shown in the second column. Finally, Maptitude computes some demographic data for the area that I drew. For example, here is the estimated household income for the population living within 5 miles of that store. And if I scroll to the right, you can see the number of households in various income ranges, the population, and more. Now, let's suppose that I want to know about the customers near all of my stores. Rather than potentially drawing many circles, I can use the Buffer tool to compute multiple circles at once and then export their data to Excel. First, let me remove this circle from the map by right clicking it and choosing Delete. And make sure that the store layer is my working layer and click this button to open the buffers toolbox. I'll make 5 mile buffers and check this box so I can compare the buffers around each store, name the buffers with the store name, and check this box to compute the demographics. When I click OK, Maptitude creates 5 mile buffers around all of my stores, redraws the map to include the new buffer layer, and opens a data view showing the calculated demographics. I'm going to close the data view and make the buffer layer the working layer in the map. Data from area layers that you create with Maptitude, such as buffers, can be exported to Excel by clicking the Export to Excel button. If I look at the Customers Layer tab in the new Excel file, it lists all of the customers that are within 5 miles of one of the stores. If I scroll down, you can see that 468 of my customers are within 5 miles of a store. The 5 digit zip code sales tab shows all of the zip codes that are at least partially within 5 miles of a store. And the census overlay tab shows the calculated demographics. Here you can see, for example, that the income is higher around store number 1, but significantly more people live around store number 2. The next analysis I'm going to do in Maptitude is create a table showing the drive time and distance from each customer to each store and display those results in an Excel file. Choose Tools, Routing and Directions, Distance and Travel Time tables. I'll choose the customer layer as the origins and the stores layer as the destinations. Choose Matrix as the output format. Open in Excel to create an Excel file and click OK. I'll enter a name for the new Excel file and click Save. Maptitude determines the drive time and distance from each customer to each store. This process may take a while depending upon how many features are in your layers. When it is done, it displays the resulting Excel file. So now you know which store is closest to every customer and what the drive time and distances are from the customers to the stores. The last analysis that I'm going to do is study the customers based on the drive times to the stores. Click this button to open the Drive Time Rings toolbox. I'm going to click this button to use my two stores as the locations around which to build the Drive Time Rings and create three rings at 10 minute intervals. And before I create the rings, I'm going to do one more thing, which is to include the customers in the ring analysis. So I'll click the Settings button and click this button to include my customers in the demographic analysis. For each time ring, I'm going to count the features in the customer layer and sum the sales of those customers. Now I can go back to the Drive Time Rings toolbox and click this button to create the rings. Maptitude uses the drive time information for the streets to determine how far you can go from a store in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, 
and adds those rings to the map. I'm going to move the toolbox a little out of the way and hide the zip code layer so that we can see the rings a little bit better. Now you can clearly see that most of the customers are within 30 minutes of a store. All of the customers in the red center rings are within 10 minutes of a store. The customers within the next ring are 10 to 20 minutes from a store. And the customers within the purple outer ring are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. Next, I'm going to click this button to generate a report, which will include the demographics of the population within each ring, and include the number of customers and volume of sales in each ring. If I scroll down, you will see first the map, and then the demographics. For example, the median income of households within 10 minutes of a store is approximately $113,000. The population within 10 minutes is about 172,000, with another 793,000 people living 10 to 20 minutes from a store, and a little over 1 million people living 20 to 30 minutes from a store. And finally, if I scroll to the bottom, you can see that there are 134 customers within 10 minutes of a store, 439 customers that are between 10 and 20 minutes from a store, and 440 customers that are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. You can export this data for the drive time rings to Excel by choosing File, Export Document, XLS, or XLSX file. I'll go ahead and click Yes here to open the Excel file, and you can see that the Excel file contains a picture of the map and all of the calculated demographic and customer data for the drive time rings. Here's my original Excel file with the customer data. Recall that we linked the customer data to the map when we geocoded it. I'm now going to update the file with some changes to my customers. For example, this customer now has $4,000 in sales. This customer moved to a new location and now has sales of $3,000. And these other three customers in Littleton are no longer active, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. If I save the Excel file and return to Maptitude, notice that there are no customers here in Lemonster, and there are several here in Littleton. When I choose Map, Update Linked Records, Maptitude updates the customer layer with the changes. You can see that this customer now has greater sales, here's the customer that moves to Lemonster, and there are no longer any of the deleted customers here in Littleton. And that wraps up this video on using Maptitude with Excel.